Hi there, I am Alexey, a product manager at Pandadoc, and here is a video about unstification in Pandadoc API. Let's start at our developerspandadoc.com portal that contains all the information that you need to get acquainted with our API. Here we can take a look at our REST API section and find browse full API reference link. Let's go there. Here we see documentation for overview of the API, for authentication, documents API, templates, and webhooks. For now, we need this part about the certification process. We can grasp through all the uh, written documentation that we have, but actually there is an easy way to do the same stuff and to just play with the API itself, and this one is to use an application called Postman. You can get it at getpostman.com, just select your operation system and download uh, this particular application. I'm actually suggesting to use a native application for your operation system, not a Chrome plugin, as it's becoming obsolete and will no longer be supported in the near future. So I already downloaded this application, so I don't need to do it one more time. I will just click this Run Postman button and will be redirected to a screen which just asks me to select applications that I've actually got. I got Postman for Mac and I will open it. As we can see here, environment and collection were just created. Collection here, it's just a collection of uh, API calls. We have three folders here and one of them is one that we need for now, it's authentication. We also have environment with the very same name and the environment is just a collection of variables. Some of them are empty, actually most of them, and the direct URI already have default value that is uh, workable for Postman application itself. So now let's move on to the first method, get access code. Here we can click on this little triangle to see uh, description of this method and it says that we need values for variables client ID and redirect URL. We already have value for redirect URL and we see it under the value if you will point uh, our mouse into it. But client ID is empty as we didn't have any value for it. And we also can see that we need to test this link in our browser and we see links to details of this particular API method. Let's click on them and we are directed back to our documentation at developers.pantalk.com. Here we can find out what we need to do and actually we need to get our API key using Pantalk Developer Console. We can go to the very top of this page and click My Applications. And here we see that we don't have any applications yet. So let's create one. And I click Create and just use demo values and here we can see that uh, client ID and client secret will be generated and we just need to direct URI. We can go back to Postman and copy this value from here. We agree with API terms and I click create. After it, I can go to settings and see client ID and client secret. I will just copy them and go back to Postman and insert both of them here, client ID and client secret. Now we are good to go and can click send for this request. But actually response is uh, okay, but unexpectedly we don't get JSON, but have HTML. Uh, we can remember that we've been asked to test this link in our browser, so let's do it. Let's just open it in the browser and we will see an error. The problem is that, let's paste it one more time, that we have this client ID and redirect URI as a variable names, not the actual values itself. That's why here we can see that we can get actual URL by going to code and curl. Let's do it. Here we have this code button and curl selected by default. And here we can copy paste actual URL where client ID and redirect URL are actually filled in. So let's copy it and insert it into our browser. 
Here we're redirected to confirmation screen. Here uh, I'm asked to give permission for my demo application. I authorize it. And after it, I am redirected to the redirect URI that I've provided. And inside URI, I have this code variable, this particular value. Let's just copy it. And we are done with our first method, get access code. Now let's go to create access token method. Here we also can click on the description and see that we need values for client ID, the client secret, and also value for one of variable code. It means that this variable uh, will be valid only for one request. We can't reuse it several times. If we need it uh, more than once, we need to perform this get access uh, code method as many times as we need this code. Let's go to body here. We already have ground type, scope, direct URI is uh, set, client ID is set, and client secret is set. So we just need this code variable. Let's just copy the values that we've got in our previous request and just click send. Request went OK, and we have our access token, type of the token, in how many seconds uh, this token will expire, refresh token, and scope. It's also worth mentioning, so we have these test sections, which actually sets environment variable. So we've just got this access token and refresh token from our response and automatically put, it, put them in our environment. Let's see here, we have access and refresh token that I actually populated. So we can try to uh, make our first call to the API to call, which actually requires some notification. I have this, this list documents method. Here we can see that in a header, we have a standard OS.2 authorization header with access token that is already populated. And we just click send and go to OK results. I don't have any documents right now, so results are actually empty. And uh, the last method that we need to take a look at is the refresh access token. Basically, it's the same uh, as access token, but we just don't need uh, code. We need client ID, client secret, and refresh token that we've got on our previous step. Um, basically, we can take a look one more time to our access and refresh token, remember how they look like, and after refresh, they need to change. Let's check, there is new access and new refresh tokens. The same stuff here with tests, so we've automatically populated them just now. So in environment, we have new values which we can uh, use without any problems. So it's, uh, it was uh, the description of how to use the certification part of Pandadoc API. But basically there is another way to perform the very same stuff and it's by using internal uh, mechanism of uh, Postman itself, which is uh, hidden here under this authorization tab. Here we can select a uh, type of our authorization. As I remember, we are using OAuth 2.0 for Pandadoc IP. We don't have any tokens right now, but we can try to get new access token here. It will just be called token demo. By default, authorization code is okay for us. Redirect URL as a callback URL. We, we can use it uh, as a callback URL. It's already populated here. And the same goes for client ID, client secret, read plus write, uh, state can be uh, absent for the sake of this demo. And client certification is sent as a basic house header. The only two parts that we actually needed here was house URL and access token URL. And to get them, we just can go to our API. And here's the part which is actually authorization URL. Postman don't need uh, the whole parameters here, just the first part. And this one is actual access token URL. I've already used this method, so it was already populated, but you will need to recreate it by yourself one more time. I will just click request token. And I one more time asked to authorize this application to do it. I click authorize. And I've got one more set of uh, access and refresh token. You can click use token. And preview request. Here, now I have two headers. One that I've created previously, that was uh, in my 
Postman collection at the very beginning. And the other one that is just added one more time uh, and is again generated by Postman automatically. It won't be saved with uh, the request itself, so you can uh, set this request and uh, resend it, for example, for someone else, and uh, this value of this token won't be sent along this request. But actually, this method has one drawback, because we have two authorization, uh, authorization headers right now, the request itself won't be working. It will return error. So we just need to deselect uh, original bearer access token uh, that we have in the, our collections very beginning. And try one more time, and now everything works as expected. So it was a quick overview of our certification in Pandadoc API. And thank you for your attention.